Hello everyone, in this lecture I am just going to elaborate what is a GPIO pin of a microcontroller and how it is functioning inside the microcontroller. Let's get started. So GPIO is nothing but general purpose input output pins of a microcontroller. These GPIO pins are specially meant for reading digital signals when configured as input and generating triggers when configured as output and it is also for receiving interrupt signals when configured as external interrupt pins. So these are the main functionality of a GPIO pins in a microcontroller. So based on the GPIO port, there are three main variants of microcontrollers available in the market. One is 8-bit GPIO port. Second one is 16-bit GPIO port and third one is 32-bit GPIO port. So this is nothing but 8-bit means it will be having 8 pins per port in a microcontroller. And if it is a 16-bit GPIO port means it will be having 16 pins per port in a microcontroller. And if it is a 32-bit it means it will be having 32 pins per port in a microcontroller. So these are the variants of microcontrollers available based on the GPIO ports. So now you can see these two are the input and output circuitry for a GPIO pin and let's discuss about the input functionality first. You can see the arrangement it is having P MOSFET and a N MOSFET. So this is an external source from which the signal is fed to the microcontroller GPIO pin and it enters into the NOT gate and after passing through the NOT gate then only this signal is given to the gates of these two MOSFETs and after that the circuit is simple, the drain of this P MOSFET is connected to the VCC and the source of this MOSFET is connected to ground and the drain of this MOSFET and source of this MOSFET is interconnected to give the signal to the terminal pin which is nothing but the internal GPIO pin of the microcontroller. So let's understand its working first and in case 1 just assume that we are giving a value 0 or ground to the GPIO pin. While passing through the NOT gate, this signal will be inverted and here we will be getting a high signal or maximum VCC voltage. So when we get a VCC voltage here, this P MOSFET will not be activated and this N MOSFET will be activated. So the main difference between P MOSFET and N MOSFET is that when we give a high signal to the gate of this P MOSFET, this P MOSFET will be inactive. And when I give a low signal to the gate, then only this P MOSFET will be activated. And when I give a high signal to the gate of this N MOSFET, then only this N MOSFET will be activated. And when I give a low signal to this gate, then this N MOSFET will stay inactive. So this is the difference. High signal will activate this N MOSFET and low signal will activate this P MOSFET. Now in our case 1, I am giving a low signal here that is inverted after passing through the NOT gate and we are receiving a high signal over here and this high signal will activate this N MOSFET. So here you can see this ground is directly connected to the terminal pin giving a value 0 over here because this P MOSFET is staying inactive. And when I give a value 1 over here from the external source, this is case 2, this high signal will be inverted to give a 0 volt or 0 signal over here after the NOT gate. And now this 0 signal will activate this P MOSFET deactivating this N MOSFET. So here you can see this is a PNP transistor. So this VCC will be directly flowing through this P MOSFET and then it will be given to the terminal pin that is the input pin of the microcontroller. So we are having high signal over here when we give a high signal and we will be having zero signal over here when we are giving zero signal. So in this way we are receiving a high and low signal when an external source is given to the GPIO pin of the microcontroller. And in the initial stage when you configure a pin as input in a microcontroller, every GPIO input pin will be in a state called floating state or high Z state. So this floating state may lead to some leakage of current which will misguide the input state. So to avoid that we are using pull down and pull up logic. So I will be explaining in deep about the pull down and pull up logic when I am explaining about the buttons concept in future. 
you can find that lecture in the playlist course of this video so for now you just understand that in the pull down logic the initial stage before we give a high signal will be low and when we give, apply a high signal it will become high and when we remove the high signal it will become completely low but in pull up logic the case is reverse that is initially the gpio pin will be high and when we apply a zero signal the gpio becomes zero and when we remove the zero signal it will automatically become high so this is the difference between these two logic you just want to use any one of these two logics if you are using a pin as input so that's all about the input configuration in a microcontroller and let's see the output push pull mode configuration so this is the output circuitry you can see this is the internal gpio pin and it is also passing through a not gate and then we are having a p mosfet n mosfet and source and drain of these two mosfets are connected to the external gpio pin that is physically available in the microcontroller and drain of this p mosfet is connected to vcc and source of this n mosfet is connected to ground let's see the case one where we are giving a zero from the internal pin so this zero will be inverted and it will be having a high state over here after the not gate and this high state will be activating the n mosfet so we will be getting this ground directly over here and this p mosfet will be inactive because we are giving a high signal in the gate so this ground will be directly fed to the output pin of the microcontroller that is physically available so we are having a value zero in the output pin and if you are having the one here this is case two and this not will convert this high signal into zero so this zero signal over here or the low signal will activate this p mosfet deactivating this n mosfet so this ground will be isolated from the terminal pin and this vcc will be directly fed to the terminal pin making the terminal pin high so this is the concept of output pins functioning in a microcontroller so these two methods of using p mosfet and n mosfet for converting state is known as push pull configuration in a gpio of a microcontroller there is another configuration available in a microcontroller that is nothing but open drain configuration so let's consider we are having an output pin in open drain configuration so the di difference between push pull and open drain is that we will not be having the upper circuitry that is we will not be having the p mosfet we will be having only this circuit and here let's understand the working so when initially we are giving a zero in case one and this will become high and it will be activating this n mosfet so we will be getting this zero signal or ground over here so the output pin will stay in zero state so when i give a high state over here you can see this is inverted to give a zero over here after the not gate and this will not activate this mosfet so again now also you can see this output pin is remaining in low state so for converting this there is no p mosfet over here so that is why we will be connecting a pull up resistor over here for converting this floating signal into high signal so now you can see case one when i give a zero signal here we will get one and this will activate the n mosfet and we will get a zero over here and in case two when i give a high signal over here this not will convert this high signal into low signal and this will deactivate this n mosfet leaving this pin in floating mode and now you can see this high signal will be passed directly to this output pin so making this output pin high so in this way open drain configuration of gpio will be functioning so most widely this kinds of open drain configurations will be used in communications like i2c we will not be using this open drain configuration in normal gpios that is inputs and outputs so we will be using most widely push pull mode of gpio pins i hope you understood the working functionality of gpio pins and variants of gpio pins available see you in the next lecture thanks for watching